Thank you very much for the invitation to the forum. It's a great pleasure to be here and talk about harnessing foreign direct investment for economic growth. In my brief remarks, I would like to make three points. My first point is that multinational corporations are producers of knowledge. In year 2002, just 700 multinationals were responsible for half of global R&D spending and two-thirds of business R&D spending, just 700 firms. And their R&D budgets are so huge that they exceed public expenditure on R&D in some countries. So for instance, in 2002, Ford Motor Corporation spent more than the government of Spain or the government of Switzerland on research and development. Daimler, Chrysler, and Siemens spend more than the government of Belgium. And yesterday, we heard from 3M about their R&D spending exceeding $1 billion. So if you as a country want to tap into the global pool of knowledge, inviting multinationals may be one way of doing so. It used to be that multinationals kept all of their R&D activities in the home country. But that has changed. For instance, these days multinationals are responsible for a large share of R&D activities in host countries. That is true in small countries such as Ireland or Hungary, but it's also true in larger countries such as Brazil or the United Kingdom. So again, if you want to stimulate R&D activities, bringing foreign direct investment is one of the ways of doing so. The good news is that, the, that multinationals do indeed bring the knowledge they produce in headquarters to the host countries. And there are many ways in which you can see it. We know from the data um, that, local, that foreign affiliates are more productive than domestic firms. We have plenty of anecdotal evidence. But one way of getting some evidence is to look at what happens after a foreign acquisition. So imagine that you can observe 300 plants that are acquired by foreign interest. And then you would like to know how these plants perform over time, right, relative to how they would have done had they not been acquired by foreign interest. Now, of course, this the scenario of not being acquired is not observable because they, they were acquired. So the best you can do is find a control group. For each plant that was bought by foreign investors, you can find a twin. Another plant that operates in the same industry in the same year that is similar in terms of size, in terms of productivity. And then you can see how the productivity of these two groups diverges over time. So that's what I have done with, in the context of Indonesia. So here you can see productivity of 300 Indonesian plants that next year will be acquired by foreign interest. And you can see that I found control group of 300 domestic plants from the same industry that were almost identical in terms of productivity. And then look what happened over time. Both groups of plants increased their productivity but FDI recipients, the acquired plants, have done so faster. So much faster that after three years under foreign ownership, their productivity growth was almost 14 percentage point faster than in the control group. But productivity was not the only thing they cha that changed. These plants became um, larger, they increased sales, but what's perhaps more important, they increase their reliance on foreign trade. So you can see here that prior to anything, uh, to change of ownership, both groups, the blue plants, the acquired plants, and the red plants, the control plants, were identical in terms of export share. They exported about a quarter of their output. But three years later, acquired plants were selling abroad a third of their output, while the control plants remained at the same level. And that's actually even accounting for the fact that they massively increased their production scale. The acquired plants also relied more heavily on imported inputs. So basically, their new foreign parents 
incorporated them in their global production value chains. In their so if FDI can increase productivity and incorporate acquired plants into global value chains, you should see the impact of FDI on export structure. And that is indeed the case. FDI not only increases exports, it also leads to upgrading of the national export structure. You can see it in cross-country evidence. If you look at 100 countries, 20 years of data, you will see that on average, FDI inflows increase the price or, or the quality of imports in the sector to which FDI came but 11%. <coughs> And this effect was much stronger for exports of final goods rather than intermediate. But you can see similar effect from national level data. So if you actually go down to the level of plant and its product by product production and exports. So for instance, in Turkey, you can very clearly see in the data that the presence of foreign direct investment encourages local firms in the supplying sector to introduce new, more complex projects, products. You can see in the data from Romania that the presence of multinationals, either um, in the sectors that buy inputs from Romanian firms or in sectors that sell inputs to Romanian firms, encourages Romanian firms to increase the quality of their exports. So what does it all mean for policy? It means that bringing FDI can help a country increase economic growth because FDI can sell, say, serve as a channel of knowledge transfer. It is a channel for bringing, tapping into the global pool of knowledge and bringing it into your country. And in order to maximize the benefits of FDI, you can be strategic about it by shaping the kind of FDI inflows you want to get through investment promotion efforts. Investment promotion um, plays four major roles. One is image building. You tell the world that your country is a good place to do business in technology sectors, for instance. The second role is investment generation, contacting foreign firms and encouraging them to come to your country. Then once they commit to coming, you help them um, navigate through the process of registration, purchasing land, and so on and so forth. And final role of investment promotion is policy advocacy. You advocate, you lobby the government on behalf of foreign firms to make their life easier. What I wouldn't encourage as part of investment promotion efforts is providing investment incentives. There are cases when it's justified, but in general, it's actually very easy to overpay. The way to do investment promotion is not to tell the world, my country is great for everything. What you want to do is target particular sectors and say, my country is a great place for doing digital activities because we have skilled worker, this, this, and that. And it's, it is the current wisdom among foreign investment professionals that such efforts are more effective. And the best news is that the data from around the world tells us that investment promotion works and that it's quite inexpensive. And if you get it wrong, there is very little downside. The worst thing that can happen is you spent a bit of money on running your agency, but no FDI came, that's okay, but you have, not in, in, you have not caused any distortion in the economy. So the bottom line is if you want to do industrial policy, FDI promotion may be the policy you want to engage in. Thank you. <laughs>